Hello, welcome back to the series is Teach Me How to See. Let's start off with reading Psalms 119 and 18. It says, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Now to see is to perceive by the eye, to have the power of sight. Okay. And so we can ask God for clear vision and he will reveal what he wants us to know and understand. So we're able to act with wisdom and fulfill our purpose, which would align with his will. I wanted to read from Matthew chapter 20, verse 29 through 34 to get started. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried out the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Isn't that amazing? So if we need something from the Lord, all we have to do is call upon him and have faith that he is able to give us what we need, whether it's healing, whether it's sight, whether it's deliverance, whatever we need from the Lord, he'll give it to us. And when we don't see as we should, we should search God for a complete sight. Don't allow others to prevent you from receiving your blessings, healings, or gifts. If God is standing by and you get a whiff of his spirit, call him, embrace him. Your life depends on it. Your sight depends on him. Read when you have time, Luke chapter 18, verses 35 through 43. That's the short story of Christ healing blind Bartimaeus. In both Matthew and Luke, people try to block the sight of blind men. Just think about it. They are already blind, struggling to get from here to there. But then you have human obstacles blocking your sight, blocking your healing. Within their spirit, these two blind men, they knew that their breakthrough was right at the door. Anytime you're near your breakthrough, there's always something or someone used by Satan to distract or prevent you from receiving what God has for you. The deceiver's job is to distract you from seeing God's power being manifested in your life, seeing good things happen for you, etc. Now, the scriptures I read were of blind men, but they didn't let anyone shut them up. Will you? Will you allow someone to tell you to hush, calm down, be quiet? Some of you have your physical sight, but are blind spiritually. Don't know you're on your way to death. Some are so distracted by gadgets and games, you can't see destruction if it was staring at you in the face. Some are so led away by temptation and lust, you've been indulging in it for so long, your mind is seared, you can't see your way out. Some of you have been warned and some are about to be exposed. Others will see your hidden sins. All these things are orchestrated by Satan. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. It keeps you blind. Do you want to see today? Let's go over the steps of how to see. Number one, you're going to confess and repent. Confess that you've allowed people, places, and things to block your sight. Repent, meaning to turn away. Number two, you want to ask, seek, and knock. The word tells us if we ask, we shall receive. If we seek, we shall find. And if we knock, the door shall be opened. Ask God for your sight, but ask him to reveal hindrances. If there are any, remove what you physically can. If that means no longer going to places or hanging with people or doing some side stuff no one knows about besides you and God, stop all of it. Call upon God. Seek him for the healing and restoration of sight. Number three, you want to start a prayer life, one that consists of fasting. You need God to clear out some things in your life. And the first thing being your blindness, pray to him, but make sure when you go to him that you believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Number four, remain at his feet. Remain seeking and calling him. Even when others tell you you're doing the most, even when they lie to you and tell you you're not good enough to call him, even if you lose friends and family, so what? If you want your sight, this is the only way. Christ is the only way. And number five, 
pray for understanding and wisdom. He will reveal to you what he wants you to do, where he wants you to go, who he wants you to speak to, and what time. He will guide you with his sight through the word. He will show you great and mighty things. Do you want clear, precise, true, keen vision? Well, some people are calling 1-800-CONTACTS, but I say... Call out to Jesus like crazy. Stay before his face. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Ain't no way he will overlook you. Those who seek him will be rewarded. Diligently seek him. You must remember obstacles, difficult circumstances, unbearable situations, drama, trifling people in your life, strategies of Satan are meant to block your sight. He doesn't want you to see God, see the provisions of God, understand God's love for you. You must see things for what they are and not make excuses or reasons for this or that. Don't allow Satan to blind you with the things of this world. Don't allow people to block your blessings or healings. I hope you received yourself some sight. Hey, please remember, talk with your doctor before fasting, okay? I'm not a medical licensed anything. Please talk with your doctor if you're led to go on a fast without food or without water. However you have it in your spirit to do, okay? Talk with you next time.